Good morning, Charlie here with Red Summit RF. I've been on the lookout for an easy and simple step-by-step -step instruction way to create a fox hunt transmitter. Sure, there are videos out there that kind of show and demonstrate and there are websites that, that uh, have a little information, but this video will take you step-by-step -step how to create a very simple fox hunt transmitter and uh, all the information will be available so that you can do it with ease. So without any uh, further delay, let's get going. So first off, I want to bring your attention to this White Court Amateur Radio Club website from White Court Canada. This is the, the website that helped me uh, with my project. You'll see here it has a fox hunt transmitter uh, details. It talks about this being a, a pro one of three projects that the, the club did. And then uh, the person who maintains this website, I believe, but for sure maintains the code, is a guy by the name of Alex Code, and his information is at the bottom here under Contact Us. You'll see his email there. I've been in correspondence with him about a few things, and he is very responsive and very helpful. So his call sign is VA6WCT, and his, his email is on, on the QRB webpage as well. Go back here. So what Alex says is that he kind of found a couple different sources on the web that helped him with uh, creating his code and getting his, his project to work. WT4Y, his website, which I found to be pretty good as well. And then also VE6BTC, I found that his website or, or YouTube page is no longer there. I, I emailed him and asked him about it and haven't heard back yet. So. We'll just leave it at that and recognize that that's uh, those three individuals, WT4Y, VE6BTC, and uh, VA6WCT all deserve credit for this. I, it's something that I am using. Uh, I'm using their source code and, and their ideas. Uh, it's nothing is really unique on my end. Uh, down here, right here at, under the Arduino files, this is what you'll need to download. But, but the first step, uh, there's really three steps to this. And I think that the first step, which is kind of, for some people, might be the hardest, really not that hard anyway, the first thing we need to do is take this mic jack and cut off the end and add some, some wires to it that we can use to connect to this relay and to these pins in, in the, the Arduino so that uh, they have a, a good connection. So I'm going to do that first. I'll, I'll kind of go over all the parts first of all. Then we'll we'll dive right into this uh, the pinout and the uh, the construction of this uh, mic jack. Then after that, we'll go ahead and download the code and put it into the Arduino and uh, set everything up and get it running. So what you're going to need for this project is you'll need to get an Arduino. I have several, but here's a here's a new one not even opened yet that I'll take out of the box and use. A relay module and I'll put down in the notes below this video how you can order one of these relay modules and I'll show you that in just a minute and then from your bow thing uh, in your box there should be this this headset that uh, comes with it and I'm gonna go ahead and just use this I believe you can buy them online too. I'll put that down in the notes as well if you want to buy one from Amazon. If you don't want to use the one that uh, that they provide. But I'm just going to use this one. I have a bunch lying around because I have a bunch of different bow things. And of course you'll need some wire strippers and, and cutters and a few wires. I went ahead and, and uh, tried to get the wires the same color as the schematic that was that's on the website. On the uh, White Court uh, Amateur Radio Club website that Alex put up there. I don't have a purple wire, so I, I replaced it for a, a, a brown one. Other than that, we've got black and red and, and blue. And what I'm trying to do is, is get wire that either either have a, a pin like this that's made to go in the, um, in the Arduino pins so that there isn't a short that you get from it. So in these pins right here, you'll, uh, you'll need to... To put these pins in, and then this wire—it's—it's—it's it's, it's a big enough gauge that I can I can pin, I, I can strip this down and put them in as well. So you'll need that. So let's get started then. I'm going to take as much of this wire as possible. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters here, and I'm going to cut right up here. 
Now we'll strip this end. So you'll notice there's very thin wires here, four of them. There's a red one right here. And then there's a blue one, a gold one, and a green one. Now I'm going to take the ends here of these four wires. I'm going to I'm going to turn on my solder fan here so that the smoke doesn't kill me. And I'm going to burn the ends of these so only the metal shows. For those of you who don't know, how to do continuity testing. It's basically just checking for resistance. And if you get resistance, that means that there's a, a connection. If you don't, if there's zero resistance, there isn't. So I'm gonna change my multimeter to ohms. And I'm just going ahead and, and uh, I'll take and bring up the schematic and I'll show you, first of all, that uh, let's go with the shorter of the two pins or the smaller of the two pins, the 2.5 millimeter jack. And we'll go for the outer, the one furthest away from the cord. That uh, is a black, according to the schematic. So what we do is we just connect, we just connect there to that pin. And then we test each of these wires and, and whenever we get resistance, then we know that's the one. So if I go here and grab this wire, nothing. There it is. So then the green wire will equal the black wire on the schematic. And so then you just go ahead and what you do is you just take this next pin, which is the inside here, right there. And now we'll just go through and test each of these wires again. There it is. And that's the blue. Anyway, go ahead with that and work through all those. And uh, then we'll move to the next step. Okay, green wire, gonna move the rest of those wires out of the way. I have this piece of wood that I use to solder with sometimes so I don't, so I don't burn this mat. So let me bring out the magic hand. And green wire is gonna match the black wire. So I'll put the black wire here. And I am just going to wrap this around, wrap this wire around this one like that and go ahead and solder it. Okay, that one's done. That works out good. Now I'm gonna run this heat shrink all the way in down to the right to the end here. I'm gonna shrink that to Now go ahead and repeat that for each of the other wires, matching up the colors from the head jack to the colors that you want at the end. All right, I'm done now. I have these four wires coming out from this, this head jack, headphone jack. So you'll notice that I have heat shrink for each of them like I showed you, and then I actually ran a couple of pieces of heat shrink over the top of the whole thing now in addition to that, just to, just to make sure it's nice and secure. Our next step is going to be a continuity test again, and uh, just make sure that our schematic that we have matches this, these wire, this wiring. So I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring the, DD, the digital multimeter over here again, change to ohms. And so let's start again at that uh, smallest 2.5 millimeter and we'll, we'll hit this, this smallest pin on the outer pin, there, that first pin. 
And that should, we should get continuity on that one with black, like I showed you before. So if we, if we grab this black pin, then yes, we get ohms, an ohm reading, where we wouldn't on any others. So now we'll go ahead and we'll check the continuity on purple, which is gonna be this inner jack, or inner connection of the 2.5 millimeter. My purple is brown, so go ahead and grab that. And sure enough, we've got, we've got an ohms reading. So those two are solid. Uh, next one is going to be the the inner pin here. I'm gonna have to. I won't be able to grab it with this one, but the inner pin on the 3.5 millimeter is is red. So I'll grab the red here, and I'm just gonna have to touch the inner the inner uh, point on this one, and you'll see that yes, we get ohms there. And then the last one is gonna be that uh, brown that uh, blue wire. So grab the blue wire. And that's gonna be the middle pin on the, right here, the middle section. And yes, we get ohms on that. Now, just a reminder, if, if you don't get an ohms reading, like if I touch here or here <clears throat> or over here, zero, you, that's, that's how you do continuity testing is just to make sure that you, you get an ohms reading and then you'll know that the, the connection is correct. Now we're gonna to go to the Arduino page going to download the latest software. For me, it's Windows. So, right here, Windows 7 or newer. I am, I've contributed already previously. I'm just going to download this time. Okay, it looks like it's, uh, it's uh, been downloaded, so I'll click on that and see if I can get it installed. I agree. I'll just take everything. It's all. Okay, we're complete, so I'll close that window. And I'll go ahead and I'll go back to the website for the White Court Amateur Radio Club. So we've got the, the IDE. Now we're going to download the Arduino files. Now we'll go to downloads and there's the file. We'll go ahead and extract all right there. I don't really care that much about where it goes at this point because there it is. So there are two different sketches here. And one of them, this one here, is a sketch that is a, he calls it an on-off sketch. It basically runs continuous when you turn, the, turn it on or off. Is There's no, you just basically flip the switch of the Arduino plug it in and that turns it on and off. And let me just open that up by double clicking on it. And when I do, here's the sketch. First thing I, I want to point out is, is uh, you'll need to change what transmits right here. I'll put my call sign in there. There and there. You can put anything you want in here really. Makes sense that you put the call sign in there though. All right, so I have that. I'm going to save that then. Save. <laughs> okay, this other one, this is the DTMF one. And this one uh, is where you can send a DTMF tone to turn it off or on. There's a few steps involved in, in uh, installing this one properly and getting it working. So it says here in the readme file, to first step is to copy the DTMF folder over to the libraries directory in the IDE environment. That's going to be located under desktop, sorry, under documents, and then Arduino. And right there is the library. So what I'll do is I will go back over to downloads, open that up, grab that DTMF file. I'm going to copy it, go to documents, Arduino, libraries, paste that in right. All right, that's done. Going back to that file in the downloads. The next step then is to copy the Fox folder over to the sketch directory. And go back over, I'll do a copy here. And that's just going to be directly under the Arduino as the Arduino is the root folder. So I'll just paste that right here. So you should see Fox and libraries and then within libraries DTMF. So that's all set up.
Now the next step is to flash the or install the sketches, one or the other, onto your Arduino. I'm going to bring up the Arduino IDE again. And this was that last sketch. By the way, I forgot to add my call sign to that other sketch. We'll do that in a minute. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead to Tools and go under the, um, where is it? The Board Managers. And this is going to be a Arduino AVR board. I'm just going to go to the Arduino Uno, because that's what I have. And Arduino Uno under COM4. I'm going to run a quick test here and go to the to the examples, basics, Blink, and then this Blink sketch comes up. I'm just going to load that real quick in. And now you'll see that the Arduino is blinking, which is what we want. That means that we're set up properly and ready to go here. So now I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna close that and go back to this uh, sketch. It's the one that's just an on-off sketch. I'm gonna load that in and uh, see if we get that to take. And it looks like that one worked. I have this cable that we, we talked about. I have the Arduino that's been programmed and here's the, here's the relay module. I need this wire here to, to plug into this relay. Okay, so we've got that. And so next step then is going to be to connect the black and the red wires, as you see in the schematic, in this uh, module, this uh, relay module, the middle pin is going to be ground or, or black. So I'm going to take the black wire and put it in here and then take this screwdriver and tighten it down. All right. Next wire is the red one. That red one also goes into the relay in the same location as that black one, except for over one, and it'll be in the in the uh, right. If the pin is, if the lights are down here, and uh, the, these pins are up, then then on the right hand side of the black one will go the red one. Now we have all the pins connected to this this um, relay module. Now we need to connect to the Arduino. So if we follow along, then this outer one right here. That's going to be the red wire that goes to the 5 volts. So I'm going to connect to 5 volts. The middle one is going to be green. That's going to go to, I believe that goes to the ground. So um, 5 volts there, ground here. And that outer one, the one on the far right, that's going to go over to pin number seven. That's the brown wire. All right, so those are all in. Now we're left with two more connectors or two more wires. That's the brown one, which is uh, purple on the schematic, and the blue one. So the blue one, that'll, that'll go to number five. And the purple or brown one, that's going to end up going over to AO right there. Okay, we're almost there now. So now the last thing we do is we're just going to plug this into the radio, this Bofang. And then this one here we'll, we, we'll use to receive. And I'm going to turn on the radio here. I just tell you, just any two meter frequency will work. And then this is the handheld one here. I'm going to turn that one on. So then we should have, uh, we should be able to hear something when I, when I start this uh, Arduino up. I'm going to reset it.
now that we've tested the on off sketch we can go ahead and load in the other sketch so it's going to go like that to sketchbook fox we'll have to change the call sign again right here I'm going to save that and Alex said that it's important to note not to let the pause between the um, between the transmissions be more or sorry be less than a minute so he's got this set at a little over a minute 65 seconds I think so if you go less than a the minute then uh, he says sometimes people run into problems let's go ahead and load that into the Arduino now that we have that other sketch loaded in. Let's try this again. We'll have to rewire this since I took it apart to load it. So we're gonna put that into five volts. The thing with this one is it won't respond until a DTMF code has been sent. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm going to send a DTMF code. Alex said the best way to do this is hold for one second, then send the code for one second, and then hold for another second before releasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Last test, I'm outside and I have the Arduino hooked up to a 9 volt battery. Here's the, the uh, relay module with the Uno and then a Bofang and I'm, I'm uh, at a specific 2 meter frequency. So what I'm going to do is walk over here to the other end of this lawn and I'm going to fire this up and I have, the, I have this radio on right now, not hearing anything. but. But I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, send that DTMF code. You've got to wait up to maybe even 60 seconds in order for the transmitter to turn on. So make sure you do that. And then we'll, uh, we're just waiting here and we'll see what happens. Now to undo this, to, to turn the transmitter off, you just hit any other DTMF code other than one, and that'll take care of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit maybe a two. Thank you for joining me. That'll be about it for the uh, building of the Fox Hunt transmitter. I hope you have an opportunity to get involved a little bit in fox hunting. It's a lot of fun. I appreciate you watching this video and please if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer it. And so with that I'll catch you on the next one, 73.